In this video I'm going to share with you my review on the new number one foundation from Chanel after testing it for two days and I'm going to compare it as well with the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation giving you my pros and cons for both of them. Hi, my name is Marisa, thank you for coming to my channel where we talk about everything beauty and lifestyle focusing on over 50 issues. Let me share with you some details about this foundation. It comes in a beautiful glass bottle with a pump in a typical 30 milliliters or one fluid ounce volume. It's produced in France and it has a suggested shelf life of 12 months. It comes in 20 shades from light to deep and it's retailed in the United States for $70 and here in the UK for £55. My shade, which is Typically the one that I use in the majority of the Chanel foundations is B20 which is classified as a foundation for light medium skin with a neutral undertone. The claims on this foundation are that it hydrates, illuminates and protects against environmental aggressors and the hydration is given by different moisturizing components but especially by red camellia oil which is the star of this new number one skincare and makeup line from Chanel. The main ingredients in this foundation are water, glycerin, esters and the main star of course red camellia oil but also some other unusual ones that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. I've placed it here for you to check it out if you are curious. That are like for instance a seaweed extract and also a fruit extract that work as solvents, emollients and gelifiers in the formulation and contribute to the 94% claim of naturally derived ingredients in the formulation provided by Chanel. This foundation does not contain SPF or denatured alcohol but it does contain synthetic fragrance besides the essential oil from the red camellia of course. Personally, I would have preferred if they had not included in the formulation synthetic fragrance and this one is quite noticeable. It's the typical Chanel uh, fragrance and I can feel it for quite a while after applying the foundation. Before I show you the footage from the tests, let me just share with you some info regarding my skin type and my preferences on foundations. So I'm 51 years old and I have all the skin issues typical of aging skin. Additionally, I have rosacea, which it's a pretty good indication that my skin barrier is not as it should be. And my skin does indeed get red very easily and dehydrated very quickly. Nevertheless, I have a combination skin and my T-zone gets oily very strongly and quickly. I don't like matte foundations and I don't like radiant luminous foundations. I like skin-like foundations, preferably with the buildable medium coverage that let the natural glow of our skin come through. On my skin I have applied the Dr. Sam's Brightly Serum and one pump of the Dermatica Moisturizer. I don't have any sunscreen and one dot of the Dior Forever Skin Correct on my under eye area which was very bluish indeed. And we are going now with the foundation. I'm going to take one pump and I'm going to spread on this side of my face with a brush. So this is how the foundation is looking. I completely forgot to place foundation only on one side in order to see the difference in coverage but it's a light medium one and although I placed two pumps of foundation for the entire face I don't think even if I place more foundation the coverage will increase. So this is as far as it goes. I will try to place a side by side comparison anyway for you to see the difference. And as I'm sure you can also see, this is a luminous foundation. I can already see here on my cheek the luminosity the foundation provides to the skin. 
and because unfortunately my skin it's not at its best at the moment I have a little bit of a dry patch here the foundation has picked it up a little bit and also here a little bit where uh, I have some flaky skin this is not the foundation fault and because of those dry patches I'm going to try to avoid setting the foundation with powder so let's see how long will it take for this luminosity to pass to the other side and become downright oily Today on my skin I applied the Brotini Polypeptide Cream from Drunk Elephant and as a sunscreen I have the Neostrata Defend and a little bit of the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer on my under eye areas. One pump of the foundation and it looks like this. It's not runny, it's more on the creamy side. I'm going to use a brush but I'm going to stamp the foundation, not rub it to help with the peeling issue. I like this shade for me, it works well. So this is how one pump of foundation on my right side looks like as opposed to this side with only the sunscreen. I'm not sure you will be able to see a difference but on my mirror I can definitely see that this side is a little bit more uniform it's a light coverage clearly I can also see the, the peeling points namely here and here on my forehead but I don't feel that the foundation has made them more noticeable than what they were before it has a hint of luminosity but a very natural one just a tiny notch above natural skin as it is at this moment I definitely like this finish very much I'm going to apply on the other side another pump I'm going to apply a tiny little more just a minuscule dot here on the side when I have my redness but I think the best amount of foundation to apply is one to two pumps maximum and depending on your skin you will obtain a light or a light medium coverage but not more than that either and now I'm going to set my foundation on the T area with the loose powder that I always use when I'm testing foundations it's the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores And this is it. Let's see how it will wear throughout the day. So this is how the foundation is looking like after 7 hours. It has been a very calm day. I've been at home the entire time. I have not used the mask and I have not touched the foundation either. I didn't blot my natural oil since then or add more setting powder. As you can see it's oily on the sides of my nose. It has faded away on the chin and on the nose. And here between my eyebrows the foundation is looking very makeup-y. It's sitting on the surface of the skin on account of my natural oils. It's radiant as well on the cheeks but not as much. I can live with this kind of radiance. So what I'm going to do now is to blot my skin, apply a second layer of the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Powder and see how many more hours I can get from it without getting back to this level of oiliness. So what are my conclusions after these two days? Let's start with the positive points. It has a buildable medium coverage, just the way I like it, but I find that the best results from the foundation are achieved if we apply to a maximum of two pumps. And that is exactly the same result as I found with the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation on me because I need as much coverage from this as I can possibly get I like to apply one pump on each side of the face stamping it with a brush and then blot any possible excess with a sponge 
also to ensure that everything is sink into the skin. The foundation sets after a little bit and it doesn't feel tacky, contrary to the Charlotte Tilbury beautiful skin. I can get a decent wear time of the foundation if I set it immediately after application on my T-zone. It will look good up to 5 hours but by then my natural oils start to come through on my forehead, on the sides of my nose and on my chin. If I blot that excess and I set with powder once more, I can get more 3 to 4 hours wear out of it, but it will not look as good as in the initial 5 hours. It will look a little bit faded on the areas where the oils came through, again, namely on the chin and on the sides of my nose. The foundation is creamy, just as I prefer them, and it's very easy to spread and apply and despite setting on the skin it doesn't feel drying at all it feels very comfortable for me the most negative point besides the price of course is the fragrance i really do not appreciate foundations with fragrance but if you are okay with that the fragrance is a lovely one it's the typical chanel in case you already know it all in all, it's a very nice foundation. I will continue to use it on occasion, but it's not a high performance one and I'm not including it on my top five, six foundations for mature, specifically for mature combination skin. That said, if you ask me which foundation do you prefer, the Chanel number no. one or the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin? I prefer the Chanel number no. one despite the fragrance because this one lasts longer on my skin looking decently well there is a little bit of luminosity in it but it's much more natural which is the way i prefer so definitely between these two i will reach out for this one and this is it i hope this video has been helpful for you and it has helped you decide if you want to try this foundation or not or the new Charlotte Tilbury one which is generating so much hype. I also did a complete review on that one so I've placed the link to that review here on the cards below in the description of this video and at the end card. I would like to thank you very much for the time that you have just spent with me. I really appreciate it and I hope you have enjoyed it and until next time bye!